If you are looking for all things real estate and an in-depth look at market fluctuations and answers to all your buying and selling questions, look no further than real estate expert Lisa Hill. Lisa brings her vast 15-year knowledge directly to you every week, sharing her own struggles as she navigates you through the twists and turns of the real estate world. Lisa has been sober for nine years and has been motivating people ever since. A speaker, mentor, and teacher, each week Lisa will welcome guests from all facets of the industry to ensure you are as informed as possible before making any real estate decisions. This is the Lisa Hill Show, real estate for the real world. Hey everyone, it's Lisa Hill, your host of the Lisa Hill Show, real estate for the real world. I am here in the studio with Jim Cooley. Hey Jim, what's up? Not much. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm pumped up about your new show. Thank I really, you. really, really am. I think it's going to be a good thing and you've been explaining it to me and I think it's going to be really cool. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited about it. So, you know, I got to ask you because I do the other show with another real estate guy. I don't want to say his name. I don't like him, but um, the, the situation is a little different with you. You're here because you want to help the consumer. Yes. The people a either selling their houses or b buying houses both. Um, what first of all, what qualifies you for that? What do you do? What what does Lisa Hill do? I'm a real estate broker. I've been selling real estate since 2002. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I this whole podcast came about um, like we were talking earlier because I have so many friends, family, people always ask me questions. People who are either looking to buy houses, they ask, they come to me first. So I'm the real estate agent, I sell the houses. I don't do the home loans. They come to me first and say, hey, I wanna buy a house. And then I direct them back to the mortgage broker and okay. say, okay, you have to get pre-approved and here's the process. So most people buying houses and even selling houses aren't familiar with the process. They don't know what to do. And I get que asked questions all the time. So it's a great resource to, hey, have my podcast and literally go through my emails, my text messages, and just answer some of the questions that people have in general or hot topics and things that, um, you know, market updates and questions that people have. Absolutely. Yeah. So now you told me some things about you and I'm kind of learning as we're going here. But now you've overcome some demons in your life and some things that have made your struggle a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of listeners can relate to that. So tell me now at a, at a point you, you had an alcohol addiction. Correct. Yep. And how did that come about that you no longer have that alcohol addiction? Well, I'm, I'm a sober alcoholic, so I'm still an alcoholic. I'm just sober. Okay. Got sober nine years ago. I started in the business, like I said, 2002. It was like just insane. I mean, <laughs> there was, it was like, you know, I'm 19 years old and we're closing all these deals and it was just, it seemed like everybody had money. It was like, what was that movie? The Wolf of Wall Street? Oh, yeah. Pretty much. Um, a little watered down version of it, <laughs> but, but pretty close to that. And just living the fast life, not really paying attention to, you know, like the important things in life, which are, you know, family and career. Yeah, just going day by day and drinking and spending money and making money and that was it. And then the market crashed in 2005 and, uh, or excuse me, 2006. 2005, the market was still good. Okay. And, um, and I realized I had a problem. Right. I had a really big problem and drinking was the answer to that problem and it no longer worked. So I quit drinking. And I got sober and I found a whole different way of life. So my approach with that happening to me and overcoming that, it cha totally changed my approach to business completely, 100%. Absolutely. Well, it changed my whole life. My outlook on life, everything completely changed. So I live life differently. I don't drink anymore. Um, but yeah, it's something that I do have to, to pay attention to. And it's something that I work on being a better person every day. And that's, it's two things that you said right there that really strike me that some people don't understand. One, you're an alcoholic and you always will be. Yes. Whether you're drinking or not. Correct. It's, it's a daily struggle. Um, some days are easier, some days are harder. Uh, so that, that really strikes me. And then nine years, nine years is a long time yeah. to be sober or to be sober from any kind of addiction yeah. or anything that you're doing that is a, a learned or bad behavior. So I'm very proud of you Thank for you. that. And I think that people at home can learn a lot from you in that sense. Um, the other thing that you said was that you had a different outlook. Let me ask you this. Once you stopped drinking, how much better of a real estate broker did you become? Oh my gosh, way better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better everything, oh. but yeah. I heard you're the best. That's what somebody told me. 
It's true. <laughs> the rumors are true, Jim. They're true. I am the best. It's weird because I don't know how you and Emran can be the best at the same time, but I guess it just happens. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know. Um, let's we'll talk about him, but no, I am the best. Um, actually, I, we were talking about that earlier. You know, yeah. I'm like, well, you know, people think I'm the best. You know, I am the best, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know how they know that I'm the best, but I am the best. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, it has made me a better um, a better real estate broker because I can, well, I can empathize more with people. Right. I really can. I really, I care a lot deeper. Like, I care. I, I take it personal. I probably take it too personal. I mean, I fight for my clients. I mean, I don't even think they know half of the battles that I deal with on their behalf because right. I'm like, hey, nobody going to. You know, of my yeah. client and I'll go to war <laughs> <laughs> I will go to battle for my clients and it helps me care I mean I care more because I truly do where before it was like okay and not that I ever I, I was I, I wasn't like a piece of shit before right. you know when I was drinking it I, yeah actually this is my show I'm gonna cuss on the show <laughs> I say stuff like shit and you know bitch and she whatever. was saying way worse stuff before we went on the air <laughs> So anyways, I wasn't a, you know, whatever before, but it's it. I really, really care about people on right. a on a spiritual level, on a humanity level. And I think about it at night when I go to bed. I do think about all my clients and their family and moving and when we're selling and when they have to move out and when they have to give their notice. And, um, you know, is this going to get fixed? How much is it going to cost them? Can they make these repairs? It, it really hits home to me. Right. So I really do care about it. And I, I think about it. They're not a number to me or just somebody that I'm never going to talk to again. I plan on every client that I have staying in touch with them forever. I, they're, they'll never get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Once I sell my house or, or you know, they buy a house from me or whatever, they're never going to get away from me. I'm going to yeah. be there for them. And I believe you and I'm going to tell you why. Because we're sitting here and we're taping this podcast mm -hmm. that's going to go out to the whole world. Yeah. You're in San Joaquin County. You're yes. in the Stockton area. Mm -hmm. So uh, the only people that you would ever really probably come into contact with are consumers in this area. However, you're doing this podcast to help everyone everywhere. So you're not expecting anything in return other than helping these people avoid the pitfalls that they could possibly fall into. Pretty much. And before we went on the air, you told me about a pitfall. Now tell me about this guy because oh I God. want people to understand what you can offer them. Okay. So tell me about this guy that's decided to sell his home on his own. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so, so a uh, gentleman approached me. I have a house for sale. Okay? okay. So he's selling his house separately. Right. And so he's looking to buy. Okay. Right. So he's selling that house. It's his his last house. He's going to retire into this house. So into the new house that he's going to purchase. So I've been in contact with him the last couple of weeks, and I talked to him yesterday, and I ask him, you know, how's it going? How's this, how's that sale of your house going? And he tells me about all the reports and inspections that he's having to pay for, and these repairs. And he said, oh, and by the way, we don't even have that appraisal yet. <sighs> okay, you should have an appraisal like the first couple days right. that you go into contract. Okay. And he's paying for things that, that contractually he shouldn't be paying for. For but instance? He, for instance, he's paying for a septic report, um, a, pe a, um, a well report. He's paying for repairs. And these are expensive things. They're about 500 bucks a pop. Wow. He doesn't necessarily... Those are things that he could negotiate. So not only are the buyers not invested, because obviously they haven't got even an appraisal done. Right. So it's completely out of order. And I feel terrible because cause this house, he's going to retire after this. Right. I mean, this money from the house that he's selling for himself, by himself, is that money he's going to be used to retire him and his wife. Okay. But yet he's still three weeks in. And escrow periods are normally 30 no appraisal. Days. No appraisal, paying for stuff he shouldn't. He's like, oh, I don't know if it's going to, I don't know what's going to happen. And I feel terrible because I just want <laughs> to say, okay, here's an outline. Here's what you need to do right now. You have to send him over a notice to perform and you have to send this. And, and I want to tell him all those things, but I'm not representing him. Right. And I just wish that 
people would have other better resources. So I want to be a better resource for people. Uh, granted, it'll probably sell. He'll sell it himself. That's fine. He probably can. Could it be better if it was if he had representation on both ends? Absolutely. I don't think like I mean, who knows? I don't think the buyers are necessarily trying to be manipulate him or do anything. Be vindictive. Yeah. It's just not knowing. And it's so complex that I don't know. Yeah. And that's with <laughs> anything. I mean, I think that a lot of people sometimes look at jobs. Like, for instance, I'm a ring announcer. And people go, oh, anybody could do that. Anybody could pick up a mic and do that. Well, you can't. No. I mean, you might you might sound all right for a minute, but you don't know what you're supposed to say. You don't know how to pronounce names. You don't know when to do things. And, it, and you don't see it until it happens. So when someone goes to sell a house and they go, oh, I could do this myself. I don't need a real estate broker. <laughs> and then they get three weeks in and they go, oh, my gosh, Lisa. I'm paying for this. I'm paying for this. I don't have an appraisal. What the hell do I do? Well, I'll tell you what you should have done. You should have got a real estate broker yeah. to sell your house for yeah. you. So why do people not do that? Oh, there's a variety of reasons. Well, some people think they can do it themselves. Oh, it's easy. I'll go online and get the forms and, and whatever. <laughs> and like what I want to say, and I don't say it. Well, I'm saying it now on the podcast. But I'm like, I because I teach classes also to other realtors. So okay. on. So. I teach realtors that have been in the business two years that still don't know how to do it. So what makes you think as a homeowner, you can download some forms and, and sell it. It's, right. It opens you up to a lot of liability. Okay. It's just, it's not worth it. But they want to save on either save on commission. They think they can do it themselves. Um, sometimes they'll sell it to a relative, which I'm not totally opposed to to that. If they're selling it to someone they know, Um I'm not as a as a, there's going to be less cutthroat. Yeah, I'm hope. not exactly. I'm not as as anti sell it yourself if it's to a family member okay. or something. That's understandable. But if it's I'm going to put my house, I'm going to put a sign in the yard and and do it myself. Oh, just be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and you said something too. You said that you teach people who have been real estate agents for or brokers for two years. Yeah. Now let's keep in mind you've been doing this now for what 15 years. Yeah. So that's a long time, and I've I've learned in my slow process of learning the real estate business that people come, people go. Yes, it's it can be almost a revolving door. There's a lot of turnaround. There is a lot of turnover. So when someone can stick with it for 15 years, a you have a knowledge base that's going to be much larger than most. B you obviously love what you're doing, so it's kind of the kind of person that you want to go to you know what I mean so I think it's good that you're doing this podcast because I think I know that your target audience is real estate consumers yes but I also think that you know possibly brokers and agents and so forth I know it's the same thing can learn from yeah of course I hope they can I like teaching people I, I don't mind I actually really 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 enjoy it I love teaching because I teach better from the mistakes I've made right. than anything. Because I can go into a class and say, okay, here's what not to do and here's why. Because I've tried it. Yeah. Because I try things. I, I probably am a little bit more ballsy than most people. I, I'll do stuff that normal people like don't do. Right. Like, oh, what's the worst that can happen? Because when you've gone through something, when you've gone to hell and back, <laughs> <laughs> really, when you go through things, you realize that it's not that bad. Right. And the fears are just like boogeymen. Yeah. And you just do it and, oh, well, it doesn't work out. And then you just do something else. Yeah. Like in the fight game, they say everybody should be hit in the face once because then you just realize eh, it's not so bad. Exactly. Yeah. yeah every, I mean, you get, I could take a few shots. Exactly. I'm like, yeah. oh, whatever. I don't <laughs> it doesn't even bother me now. Stuff that, you know, years before I would never even think of even trying because what if it doesn't? Well, who effing cares if it doesn't? You tried it and then at yeah. least, you know, you don't like it. And yeah, that's it. I you mean, you fail at 100 percent of the things you don't try. Yeah period. Yeah. So what can people expect moving forward with the Lisa Hill show? Well, I like to bring value. So if I like to teach, educate and bring value, I'll bring and if I don't know something, then I'll bring someone in who does. Okay. Um, I have a lineup um, next. I have another mortgage broker. They'll be coming in explaining the home buying process. Like I mentioned before, it people come to me and then I send them back to the loan officer to get pre-approved. I'm like, right. okay, are you paying cash? Nope. Okay, you need to get a loan. Have you talked to a loan officer? Did you get pre-approved? Like, nope. I'm like, okay, here you go. Here, I'll send you back to to my partner. She'll get you pre-approved and then come back to me and then we'll start looking at houses. So right. that's how the process works. So I'll have her in uh, next week and we'll talk about the home buying process. Okay. Yes. And, um, you know, making your home green, solar panels, all the questions that consumers have, homeowners, home sellers, or people that looking to purchase a home have, 
we'll answer those questions with the podcast. And then people can always go to my website, uh, write in, ask questions or any topics okay. that people want to hear. We'll talk about that as well. And I'm assuming it's just lisahill.com. It's lisahillteam.com. Lisahillteam.com. Uh, lisahillteam.com. Yeah. So you have a big team behind you. I, I have a good team. A behind good team. Me. Not a big team. A good team. Not a big team. I have a good team. Good is better than big. I have a solid team behind me. So yes. now, aside from all that, you're also going to be doing things like updating people on the the market. Oh, yeah. And of the course. seller's market, the buyer's market, so forth and so on. Um, listings and things like that yes. that, you, that you like to talk about. So what other things besides, okay, so we're going to have good interviews. You are. You're going to have good interviews for things that you don't necessarily aren't an expert on, but someone else might be. Yeah. So you, if you... Want to and learn. someone else to talk to besides you, Jim, because we nobody likes can't talking chat to me. the I'm, whole time. No, I'm terrible <laughs> to talk to. So what sort of things are you going to bring them in the sense of news and updates and things like that? Market updates, for sure. Absolutely. Because it's really important to see people ask, is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? So yeah, of course, every week we'll go through um, what it, what's going on. Like we talked about a little bit before we started uh, recording that it is a seller's market right now right now and why it's a seller's market and the months of inventory and properties that are selling so um so to keep people up to date on the market and how often does that fluctuate um well we get updates pretty much every month wow. but it can fluctuate i mean we have it depends on i mean one month over on um, the properties that were put on the market they dropped so we're looking at like a 30 percent decline in properties that were listed why which does that means happen <laughs> people decide not to sell it, yeah it can uh, okay. for a variety of reasons it okay. can happen but it's always good to watch it um you know to see what's going on with the market right now the holidays coming off the holiday the holidays is always funky okay. i mean we always people tend to want to like wait to put their house on the market oh we're gonna wait we're gonna wait we're gonna wait and then we get an influx usually around springtime of people putting their house on the market Okay. Yeah, that's generally so, what we see. So if you're at home and you're thinking, I, I want to sell my house in the next year, I'm just not sure when, you listen to the Lisa Hill Show and you will yeah. get a barometer of when it's a buyer's market, when it's a seller's market, and maybe that will tell you, hey, now's the time to make the move. And it would be right now because inventory is low, which means there's there's buyers out there that are looking, especially when the sun comes out. As soon as the sun comes out, our phones ring because people, <laughs> it's so funny how that happens, like human nature. The sun comes out one day and people are like, I want to buy, I want to buy, I want to <laughs> buy. Well, inventory is low right now. So if the house is on the market, those buyers, we don't have a whole lot to show them. So okay. it's minimal. So, so we're the, seeing multiple offer situations and we're not seeing like on, for example, on the buyer side. Okay. When buyers are out looking, sellers can be more picky. Sellers can be more picky with the offers they want to accept and how much money that they're willing to give up to the buyer. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Yes. At this moment. Okay. So let me ask you this as a consumer, a yes. guy that would buy a house. Yes. Let's take a $500,000 house okay. in that range. Okay. In a seller's market, how, that house goes for 500000 okay. Now we drop to a real bad buyer's market mm -hmm. to where it's just bad. Yeah. How much does that house go for? Well, it depends. If it's priced right, like if you were, you're a seller, okay, okay. and you want to price your, and your house is 500000 if it's priced right, it'll go for 500000 Okay. <laughs> or maybe a little bit over. Okay. That's how I would price it. I'd go to you and say, okay, um, okay, Jim, hey, here's your house right here. Here's what's sold in the area. Here's how many days on market. This is how long they're staying on the market. Okay. This is this is what's sold. What do you think your house is worth based on these property other properties that have sold? And then I also look at competition. So we'll I'll take an approach with you and say, look, here's our competition. Here's a buyer looking in that area. These are all the other houses they're gonna look at. Where do you think yours adds up? Okay. Compared. Where you, yeah, compared. When if you're a buyer and you're shopping, what do you think that yours would go for? Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, so so the fluctuation, right. if you have the right real estate broker, isn't as bad. Correct. Okay, I understand Correct. now. It can be bad in anything. I just took a listing um, on Tuesday, and I, I listed it at 185. Okay. It had li been listed previously by another agent for 240000 It didn't sell. That's a huge difference. It's huge. Nothing else in that neighborhood sold for that much. Right because it's not worth that much. So, so I showed him. Does that him, fall on the broker then, the real estate well, agent? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, okay. yeah, there's, it, when you look at it, like, again, like I said, I, I went to him and said, okay, here's what I think that your house would sell for. 
based on these things. Here's, it's it's been sitting on the market for six months. Your area, things are selling in 22 days. So wow. what's, why That's do you- fast. Yeah. And his was the highest one in the area and it wasn't the best looking one in the area. Okay. Which is nothing wrong with that. It just wasn't worth that. Right. And, and no one was looking at it. He said, oh, no one looked at it. Well, I want to look at it either. <laughs> I showed him. I'm like, okay, if you're a buyer, why would you want to look at your house when it's, you know, 50,000 higher than the one down the street and yeah. they look the same? Why would you wouldn't even want to go look at it? Right. So. so those are some of the things that you can learn listening yeah. to this show moving forward, not just from you, but from others. So let, let's do this now. So now that we have them, they're listening. We understand about the buyer's market. Tell us about the market right now uh, in this area. Yeah. Like I said, 2.3 months of inventory, which means it's a seller's market. So explain that inventory. So you have this many houses that will, so you say 2.3 months means so if we stopped, they should be gone by then. Yes. If no, if today we stopped putting houses on the market, nobody listed another property, it would take 2.3 months to sell all them and all the inventory would be gone. And that's not very much. No, it's it, not. What does it get to? What is it? Well, I mean, gosh, in the foreclosure days when it was a huge buyer's market, it was like a like a year wow, okay, okay. of inventory. Okay. So a to give you an idea, buyer's market, more than six months of inventory is a it's that's a buyer's market. Seller's market is less than three months of inventory. And so a neutral market is between three and six months of inventory. Okay. So we're just on the other side of that right yes. now at two point three. Yes. Okay. So okay. it's a seller's market. It's been a seller's market. For for a few months. Okay. Yeah. And um, our average price, which is way up, is four hundred and forty-four thousand. That's wow. the that's our average price. Yeah, which is high. Okay. In San Joaquin County. And that's in San Joaquin County mm -hmm. right now. Yep. So yeah, values are up, interest rates are low, and it is a seller's market right now. So if you are in San Joaquin County and you want to sell your house, call Lisa Hill. LisaHillTeam.com. <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that you can't. I'm the boss. Yeah. No, I'm really not. Um, okay, so that's good. So there's a lot of things that people can look forward to on this show, and I've already learned a ton just sitting here. And that's yeah, you're gonna be an expert. I am. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a real estate guru. I'm gonna be you, Donald Trump. You are. You're gonna just do your own. You're gonna do your own pod. You're like, oh, Lisa, I don't, can you be a guest on my show? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking over the real estate market in San Joaquin <laughs> County. Period. Um, so then, let me ask you this: What is your goal? I know you want to help people, but why is Lisa Hill sitting in this studio right now taping this podcast? Because I like to hear myself talk. I, I, I like hearing you talk too. <laughs> no, to my, okay. Contractually my obligated. Old, <laughs> I wrote it down on a piece of paper <laughs> and slipped it over to Jim. You guys didn't see that. No, my ultimate goal is to help people. Ultimately, that's it. To help people and use a platform and help people. Okay. And educate. So let's say someone's listening to your podcast in three weeks. Let's hope so. And they will be. Because I'm helping you. Let's help. Um, That's one person so, other than my mom. Okay. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> and they have a question. Do you have a problem with someone emailing you and saying, hey, I listened to your podcast. You said this, but I just want to clarify. Are you okay with that? Absolutely. Yeah. You like I like that. Interacting with the oh, listeners. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what this is based on was all the interaction kind of behind the scenes. People calling, texting, emailing, you know, Facebook messaging me. Hey, um, how do I get the value of my house? Hey, is it a good time to refinance? Hey, what do I need to do to sell my house? And what if, you know, I'm, hey, I'm getting a divorce and why is, you know, he's still on the note and not on the deed and whatever. So random questions all the time. Yeah, totally fine. This is what this whole thing is about. Okay. And then I think that we should keep, I want to keep our ear to this gentleman that's selling his house on his own because we have an update now. You know, he's paying for this. He's paying for that. There's yeah. been no appraisal. So maybe next week we give an update, like did the house sell? Did he get an appraisal? Yeah. You know, and I think that people, because I think that if we follow a story like that, then people can kind of relate to it in yeah. their situation and go, okay, well, I don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. So I need to do this. Let me ask you a question that's on the mind of every consumer. Okay. Why in... In just a few words, not in a few words, it's going to take more than that, but in okay. a few sentences, why should I hire a broker slash real estate agent to sell my home if I can legally do it myself? <laughs> oh my gosh. There's so many reasons. You're okay, going to give too me many a words few, already. you're going to give me, a, no, you no, like no. I start out with the no, laugh? I, I want you to tell me. I want okay, you to tell me. So the laugh is the first indication. <laughs> just the laugh. That's it. I laughed at you. That's it. The silence, the laugh and then silence. Well, a couple things. One, the main thing I think is liability because people can come back and sue you and people will. We're in a 
in a culture of sue. I mean, people will sue you for anything, especially if they think you have money. Right. So a, a home seller, okay, you didn't give me this. My it, uh, Someone will come back a year later, the roof's leaking, I'm going to sue you. If it's not disclosed properly. So you want to hire a professional that can disclose all of those things to the buyer, make sure that they sign off on the correct documentation. And that way, if it does go, the way that I run every single one of my transaction is if we're going to court, how would a judge look at this, period. Every email I write, everything I do is, look. I do it in the eyes of a court. Okay. So if a judge is gonna look at this or an attorney or somebody reasonable, if they're gonna look at it, I have no problem. Everything that's done and is documented, like or I take an offensive, appro- like okay, or to take a defensive approach. I'm like, okay, you're gonna sue me. What do I need? <laughs> I know I'm getting. I've been sued. sued. I've been sued before, and it's really I can see that. petty and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's really petty and stupid most of the time, but still, you have to go through all the document. It, it's number one is liability. Why? So self protection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, aside from like the marketing thing. Yeah, of course, you want to get the most exposure and the right buyers and blah, blah. I'm not going to go through the big old sales part of it because you could put your house online and sell it yourself. But it's still common sense that the more exposure you get on anything you're selling, absolutely, the better well, price you're going to get. And the right exposure, too. Yeah, and then you've got people that are putting in bids on a house rather than just one guy that's like, hey, I want to give you $50,000 less. Yeah. And now you've got five people that are putting in higher than, than what you're asking. Yeah. So I see that. So definitely I think exposure. the number one reason is is just liability. Okay. Just protect yourself and Perfect. and and um, yeah. I mean, people will say, "Sell your house with me, and not yourself," because I can market it. I can do this. I can do you know all of these other reasons, which are great reasons, by the way. But I think the only important thing is you know protect yourself and don't get sued. Absolutely, and I think that's a great answer. Perfect answer. Yeah. So. First episode, we got some of that stuff out of the way. Mm-hmm. People know what to expect from you yep. now. It's the Lisa Hill Show. What is the, uh, there's a subtitle. Oh, real estate for the real world. Real estate for the real yep. world. Because we do not do real estate in fake worlds around no. here. Okay, so the Lisa Hill Show, real estate for the real world. Next week, who is the guest that you alluded to? Uh, Letitia Stock. Okay. She works at Stern's Lending. She's been in the real estate industry for uh, 30 years, 30 okay. plus years. And she is amazing. Okay, and yep. we just talked about 15 years for you, 30 years. So you're going to get 45 years of expertise next week on the show. Yes. That people can look forward to. And you guys are going to talk about? Home buying process. Okay. So what it takes. Uh, we also have some really, really awesome uh, grants in San Joaquin County. Oh, wow. Which free money. I like that. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the grants and overall home buying process and, and yeah, what, what people need to expect when you're buying a house because most people don't know. Absolutely. Okay. So there you have it. I mean, the first episode, now people know a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. Um, People know what to expect from the show. When we go off the air, you're going to explain to me how to get some of this free money because I always like free money. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, when when is your show going to come out every week? When can people expect to find your show? Well, depends on when you can finish editing it. Oh. (laughs) So you guys expect at least a show every two months. <laughs> we'll do a, a show at least every 10 days. Okay, there yeah. you go. So at least every 10 days. Hopefully we'll get four out a month. Yes. Um, which is good because the the more information, the better, the more you know. Obviously, yes. we all learned that from the G.I. Joe cartoon in the 80s. Knowing is half the battle. Yep. And that's what we're going to do here. Absolutely. So you won't have to hear me very often. I won't be on here, but Lisa <laughs> will be on her own. I just wanted to interview her a little bit so that people could learn a little bit about what they're getting it. from this program. <laughs> So there you go. I mean, I'm done. What do you, what do you right, have to say Jim, to your thank listeners? Thank you so much. Yeah, you guys tune in. Um, like I said, we're going to be recording once, at least once a week. We'll have something out once every 10 days. If you have any questions, want to hear a topic, um, you can you know reach me on Facebook or my website is lisahillteam.com or the lisahillshow.com as well. And yeah, look forward to um, serving the community. Thanks, no Twitter, so. no Insta? I'm old. I don't do that. All right. Okay, I do have Twitter. I know you do. It's what is it? Lisa uh, Hill two oh nine, I think. At Lisa Hill two oh nine. I think I don't even think the app's on my phone. I don't <laughs> it's too confusing. There's too many of those things. I'm old. Okay? I use Facebook. I know I'm a millennial. <laughs> Supposedly I fit into that category, but I'm more like an old person. So it's just <laughs> so it's just Facebook and and LinkedIn. I'm just kidding. All right, <laughs> All right thanks, Jim. All right.
Thanks for stopping by the Lisa Hill Show. For more information, please visit lisahillteam.com. Catch us on the next episode when Lisa brings you more real estate for the real world.